This is the Khalid Podcast. I'm Karu Solihin and we are on episode 12. My guest here today is Fridaus Amza, the founding partner of New Entity. You are one of the top branding specialists out there with huge amount of experience in the industry. Your company, New Entity, has more than 100 clients globally, which some are high-profile companies such as Singapore Airlines, Allianz, and Starbucks. We are here to talk about your impressive journey, the importance of branding, and your thoughts on the current corona outbreak. Fridaus, assalamualaikum. Welcome to the Khalid Podcast. Waalaikum salam warahmatullahi Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Um, so how have you been lately with, you know, all this um, outbreak thingy, news thingy, and, you know, uh, I'm sure majority of the businesses are affected and... Um, yeah, how, how, how's the experience like working from home, you know, uh, communicating with your team differently? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a very uncertain period. And I think most or if not all businesses are affected one way or another. Um, we, were, we were also obviously affected because our clients are more affected than us. And when, <clears throat> when our clients are affected, they, they have to cut costs, they have to make changes and that will affect us because we are more of a B2B. Um, but ultimately, you know, working from home, not being able to stay in the same studio with the rest of my team, uh, it's a challenge to, to keep the positivity, uh, to keep the mood up, the morale up. Um, but we, we have to do our best. Lah. Number one, the, the mental state of everybody has to be optimal. Uh, and then to know that this is a phase that we need to you know, survive and then come out stronger. So, yeah, and, uh, I think that's the, the thing that most businesses out there are trying to pull through as, as well. Yeah, so we have to go through this together as a, as, 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 you know, as a country and everyone has to cooperate to get the numbers down so businesses mm-hmm. can start to operate slowly and stuff like that. And um, so let's dive into your background. So for those uh, audience and listeners who wants to know more about you, more about your company, um, I, 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 I read that you spent six years working for a HR tech company. And maybe you can share more about that moment before you started your company. Yep. Sure. So uh, that's my first official job, uh, full-time job, sorry. So I, I got in as a web designer, which uh, if you look at my academic background, it's not really focused on that. So, but I was very interested in design to, to begin with. Um, so within that company, it was, uh, it was called Silk Road Technology. And the, they were just starting operations in Asia. They had an office in Australia. They started uh, an office in Singapore, a very small office. Um, I remember it was at Prudential Tower really small service office. There were just like three of us. Um, and then by the time I left, it was a regional, uh, I mean, the regional operations had grown. It was originally, this company was from US, um, but uh, my managing director is, uh, I mean, <coughs> set up the team and, and grew the operations. And, but at, at the end of the six years, my, my time there, they were having offices in pretty much, uh, like, I mean, close to 10 countries in, in, the, in the region. Yeah. So what I do there is, um, towards the end, I was basically the the creative lead of Asia Pacific. Um, And I supported the marketing function as well. Um, And one of the interesting things about that company is because uh, it being a HR technology is very people centric, right? There's this element of employer branding that we are trying to push. with all our products. Uh. So the, the products are things like, you know, uh, onboarding portal, hiring portal, uh, what else is there? Like intranets, things like that. Things to help HR function, right? But they have a very employer or employee centric take to it. Like make people work, uh, make, make them happy, make them have a meaning when they come to work. So I learned my, my first taste of branding actually comes from that angle which I find to be interesting and, and quite essential. Ah, I see. Interesting. So you've seen a lot. And what made you want to start your own company from there? 
like mm. and and also how's the transition like i heard i heard your your mentors are also from the previous company mm. is it yeah so yeah. maybe you can speak more about that sure so, so um after about three years or so the team there has grown and uh, you know with any growth right you you have middle management now first you get to work with the uh, the boss the the founder or the 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 top guy lah. and then uh, as things get better he put in place structure he, there's this protocols there's operations as uh, middle management again i said uh, managers and then i start to feel like uh oh, this 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 has become just another job initially it was super fun we were working long hours but i get to explore everything that i didn't expect to explore right um i was brought in as a web designer but then i was doing uh trade show booths i was doing regional marketing i was like the opportunity was intense uh. um but as the role gets narrow and narrow and gets a bit more repetitive uh i think about three years into the job i feel like uh okay maybe i should i, st- I started doing freelancing that's one thing so on the side i got all these jobs and then i start to see, think that hey if i do full time maybe i can make something out of that uh but i never got the guts to jump jump ship you know so it was only after years and years of uh getting all this mundaneness then something happened on the sixth year they they had a major shift in leadership in the us and then they decided to close the singapore office so everybody in the singapore office had was was uh, affected uh, uh, those that came from all the other other offices or other countries had to go back and then the the wow. locals were most affected by having their jobs uh, taken away uh. so uh, i told my boss back then I wanted to just give freelancing a shot before I jump on another job. Ah, so sorry, your boss also was uh, out of job. Everyone yeah. was affected. All right. Yes, he was let go, and and I just want to uh, shout out to him to 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 note his his leadership, lah, because like towards the end, uh, even though he everybody's out of the job, he took time towards the end to make sure that everybody was able to move on, including me. So. Um, Yeah, so I, I I had lunch with him, and then he was asking my plans, and then he told me, "Why don't Why don't I set up a company?" I was like, "Yeah, my freelance. I already have a sole proprietorship. I already running technically running a company." I said, "No, set up a private limited." Um, he he explained the benefits, and then uh, go for like set it up as a proper company, have employees because you're gonna empathize with business owners better, and just based on that ah. Uh, then you you'll be able to to speak to them uh you know and understand them better so i thought okay uh, i'm already i mean i'm already having a company and i i thought i thought i would be able to just solve their problems as it is lah like, being doing design yeah, yeah. and what not but uh there's wisdom in that because as the years go by and the struggles that i have to go through and i can really really relate lah, to to business owners who are going through the same things and i think empathy which is another core component of branding is, is super important uh. yeah mm, okay so, yeah. interesting interesting so mm-hmm. it took uh, you to get let go for you to to, to transition yourself so uh, um in a way if let's say it was all going good during that company you might still be <laughs> working for the company be, I, right I, now yeah That's the thing. I think comfort zone is a is a killer. Yeah, I'm I'm too comfortable there. The the money is very comfortable. Um, there's fear, obviously, mm-hmm. because if I were to jump ship, I just got married at that time. Um, I had my yeah. first baby on the way. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of risk also. Correct, correct, uh, correct. But you know, you, I told myself that if I don't give it a try now, then I will never know lah. If I jump on to another job immediately, then I will never know. So during during that time, sorry, during that time where you are doing your freelance job, right? It's all it's all uh, related lah, related to what you're doing for the company also. But then you're just finding your own clients, is it? Like how do you? No, no. The company is doing uh, like I said, more like career portals, um, oh. certain kind of very specific deployments uh, with their technology. All uh, right. So what do you offer for your freelance? Uh, 
uh, back then it was like very simply graphic design, illustration, ah. uh, web design, things like that. I see, I see. So it's just that. Okay. And um, from there, you 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 had no choice. But did, did you want to, uh, at that period of time when you know that you got uh, laid off, do you, um, do you plan to find a new job? Or you are you, are you thinking of that direction? Or you actually, like, you know, you want to start your own company? Uh, I told myself to give myself about three to four months. If it doesn't work out, I'll get a job. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. From the target of three to four months, it became, uh, what, five, five and a half years now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's still, still going on. Uh, and, and the stakes are different now. Uh, there's, yep. It's not just about me anymore. There's, uh, and it's not just about me and my family. There's like 10 other people and their families. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Different. Right. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about your company that you have built a uh, new entity right so let's uh maybe you can share what you guys are up about and yeah sure so a uh, new entity is a branding agency in singapore um we specialize in brand development so what that entails is everything from uh like there are f- like four basic com- components eh? uh brand strategy because we we need to understand that to to proceed uh brand visualization how it looks and feels and then we have uh, brand activation. How do you activate the brand? How do you go to market? And then lastly, brand marketing. How do you keep pushing the brand and grow the brand? Up? So um, within those, there are all these components that uh, our expertise that we've brought from our previous jobs, we bring into here. So, uh, you know, I've got web designers, developers, uh, marketing people, illustrators on board. All right. Okay. Um. So it's more branding. Okay. Um. Maybe you can share with us. Uh. What is branding all about, and why is it important for maybe small business owners or those who have just started business, uh, mm-hmm. to have a, a good branding. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So uh, to talk about branding first, you have to look at the word brand first. Yep. Eh? Mm. So what what does a brand actually mean? Um, historically, of course, you you see uh, they started this practice of branding cows, right? They, they use metal and brand the cows, and that's basically to tell people that this cow is mine. And then it slowly evolved to they use the branding iron to uh, mark uh, crates or barrels. It's essentially to tell people this is mine, shops and all that. So the brand actually it has evolved over time. Uh. Now the brand does not, it's not about you telling people that this is mine. It's what people think about that product or that service or, or yourself. And I like this definition by uh, one of my uh, people I look up to uh, in branding. Mm-hmm. His name is Martin Meyer. And he, he wrote that a brand is very basically a, a gut feeling that you have, that people have towards you, whether you are a company, product, uh, service organization whatever it is and I like the simplicity of that definition because ultimately it's when you buy something or when you decide on something right it's it's your feeling right you your trust your when you uh, take for example if you go to sorry I'm fasting but you go to 7-eleven and you're thirsty and you are you feel like a cola like, like some kind of uh, fizzy drink so you cut off all the all the vitagen, uh, all the plain water, and then you look at a fizzy drink, which is that's a lot. But somehow your gut feeling just go out for the coke or sprite or whatever it is, right? So that is a result of years and years of conditioning, of of branding, of marketing that has gone into you, and you decide that on that split second. So uh, therefore, if if that's the definition of brand, which is a gut feeling, branding is essentially the process, and it's an ongoing process. And I think people need to understand that. Uh, it's a long process of building that or crafting that gut feeling. So that's branding. And I think um, why you're asking why it's important. Eh? Why it's important for companies to have branding. Yep. 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 Um, you, we, we all need to realize that we have a brand, whether we like it or not. If you loosely change the word to reputation eh, or perception, everybody has that kind of perception, right? Like, uh, you talk about first impressions, you talk about, um, what do you call that, 
when you put up some kind of content, people will form certain opinions about you. So those things are, are part of your brand, whether you like it or not, whether you acknowledge or not. So it's a matter of whether you want to take control and consciously craft your brand or not. So if you if a company um, takes on I mean takes branding seriously, eh, the benefits are they could penetrate their market their, their target audience better. They can speak better. They can communicate better. Uh, they don't they don't beat around the bush. They don't seem to not know where they're going. It's very it's a lot more focused. Uh, that's one of them. Uh, definitely. Okay. Okay. So. Um... But I'm sure this concept of branding is, uh, I mean, maybe new players or new business owners. I'm sure they want to be like, okay, I want to start a new business, so I want my brand. I want I want my brand to be out there, so they they will engage experts like you and stuff like that. So everyone is going through that. So it's all about that branding and branding and branding. But if let's say everyone is doing that, how can you be, you know, how can be? Can you have that X factor among the rest of the ones that? You know, also are doing branding, yeah. In your, in your, maybe in your niche, yeah. yeah. Great question. Um, so one of the things I, I I like to associate with branding is branding is all about radical and meaningful differentiation. Um, radical because you you have to uh to stand out. It's a it's a matter of standing out, right? But it cannot be different for the sake of being different. Um, example, eh? have you seen those, I, I can't think of one right now, but those very attention-seeking advertising yeah. or att- very attention-seeking content pieces or whatever. Yep. And then it, it gets its 15 minutes of fame, it gets shared like crazy and then it dies off. Right? That's because they, they just, what's the next cool thing that we can do? They keep thinking of that. That's okay, that's good. That's, you, you get attention, but there's no meaning to it. There's no uh, long-term uh, you know, transition into gaining gaining audience for it. So you also want to pair that with meaningful differentiation, meaning you define your audience, you define who you are, you make alignment, you, you make sure that what you do, what you say is aligned and, and appeals to who's yep. listening. Um, I think that's very important. Uh. Mm-hmm. And then if you if you think about that that you you're kind of like narrowing down your your playing field they might instead of looking at say you do you do uh uh what do you call that you, you say you're a car salesman right or you, you say you, you you you're a car brand then you when you do when you narrow it down like um cars there's there's all kinds of cars but when you narrow it down to like um sedan then you're just looking at all the sedan competition when you don't narrow it down to okay i do sports sedan then mm-hmm. you even narrow it down further mm-hmm. so same with everything else uh, you, you have to narrow down your playing field and know who exactly are your competitors and it, it just it makes it less intimidating uh, to move forward in business That's yeah right. yeah because I, i'm just uh giving a thought to like um as a business owner where mm-hmm. we have two set of stories where one business owner, uh, maybe he's uh, very passionate about what he do, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he's very good at what he do. He, he, he's passionate about it and he starts his own business. But then when there's another um, uh, competitor who is in the same industry, for example, he has, he's, he's, he's rich and he has all the money. But then he, he just wants to, he's in it for the capital or maybe he's in it for the profits. So he engages people like, like, like yourself, you know, to, to, you know, okay, I have this idea. Okay, I want you to make my company and my brand, uh, you know, to beat the rest of the competitors, you know. So at the end of the day, I was thinking like, okay, maybe, um, what's the difference? How, how's that? How is that competition going to be like, you know, one with that real, um, you know, enthusiasm, real passion with a big why, right? And, and, and the other one is just there for the profit. So like, can that, can this um, company sustain longer than this mm. guy or, or will this guy be, you know, with his determination will still overpowers or kick this person out or something like that. Yeah. If you get what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't give a romanticized answer, but to be realistic, uh, if you have money, you can make things happen. Right. Uh, you, you have two main resources, time and money. So if you have money, you can buy time, you can buy other people's time. Um, which means 
but we're not talking about branding yet. Eh? Just these two guys, uh, these two examples that you mentioned, the person with the why and uh, with the sheer determination, eh, if I assume that he is very determined, he, he hustles like crazy and he's in it for the long haul, even though he don't see results. Eh? Uh, of course, I would say I, I would want him to be successful just from a human point of view. The other guy, you know, he's already established multiple companies and he just started something that is in his playing field, right? Competitive landscape. Um, of course, if he deploys a lot of advertising, a lot of branding, he will gain a lot of traction, huh? which makes him a very serious competitor to, to this guy. But uh, that's the reality of things, uh, unfortunately. However, where I, I think I'm for the small guy also is because uh, it's about his purpose and passion. Uh, and, and this is key. This, this transitions into something personal and something that uh, our company believes in. Because we have a tagline that says branding with purpose. And uh, we've always found that um, companies or organizations are actually organizations that, that try to do something that is very close to their hearts, especially when we talk to the founders and they, they're very passionate about it. Uh, they, it. It's in their blood, you know, like they, they need to do this. They cannot not do this that kind of situation. Um, or even if it's like, uh, on an Islamic context, they're doing something that is like found to kifaya. If they don't take care of this, then it, a lot of us will be in trouble. So I find those to be the most rewarding types of clients to work with. Uh. They may not be the best paying clients, um, but we, as a business, we want to help them. So, that, yeah, to answer your question, that's the, yeah, the reality. Yeah. You have to, uh, I think I think you answered well, uh, but uh, do do you have uh, clients who who came to you without any purpose, who just wants? Oh. <laughs> then, then on your end, how do you deal with that? <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be tough for you. Transactional, so um, they they come to us with requiring X Y Z, and then we try to dig uh, dig deeper lah. Like why do you require X Y Z? What are you trying to do? And then when we come down to the the purpose questions, eh. Like, uh, if I, I can ask you, uh, why do you start this company? There's an opportunity here, la. you know, you can make money. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we, we take it as it is. But even those kind of people, eh, they have a certain worldview. They have a certain uh, objective in life. Even if they, there's no like um, common ground in terms of purpose, eh, they, they, they have something that they want out of life. And to them, that's their purpose in life. Uh, and we respect that. Uh. So, for example, uh, quite recently, I did something for a uh, sort of an IT services company. And then the, the founder was just saying about uh, opportunity, this and that, um, his background. But ultimately, what he wants eh, is respect. Mm. He wants to be seen as somebody. And then I dig even deeper, like, why, why is that important to you? Mm -hmm. And I believe his answer was, that's, that's his goal in life. Uh, if I have that, I know I have made it. I know that. that's. Uh, he doesn't even talk back about. Uh, he doesn't even talk about giving back. Like, or usually that's the the look at the hierarchy of needs, right? When people come to the highest point, they they always want to give back, right? But he doesn't even have that that view. So okay, if if that's his highest sense of purpose, then let's let's work towards that. And we built his brand. All I mean, having that kind of drive underneath it. Because he wants to be recognized and, and seen as somebody. Mm -hmm. that's, that's completely fair. Who are we to right, judge? Right, right, correct, correct, correct. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, for those small businesses who are well aware how branding can uh, impact their brands, right? But they, at the same time, they don't have the financial investments, uh, financial to invest in branding. Right. Um, are there any simple steps or strategies that you can advise for them? Okay. Um, like I said, branding is an ongoing process. Yep. And uh, there's a lot of service providers out there like uh, for that, that, that does work that contributes to the overall branding. Right? So if you're really, uh, you know, cash, uh, I mean, strapped for cash, you, there's a lot of things that you can invest in terms of your time uh, to learn to yeah. learn to build yeah. stuff um i think the access to creative services has been democratized so you have things like canvas eh, canvas sorry canvas squarespace for websites wix even 
uh, although I would, I would recommend Squarespace for weeks. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of access. Uh, so, and, and even like doing Facebook advertising is, is being made so simple nowadays, uh, Google Ads and all that. So it's whether you want to hire somebody to do it or do it yourself. But from a branding point of view, I would, I would uh, urge these business owners to uh, read up a bit on, on branding, understand that branding is not just about your logo, your colors, all this superficial stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are important because those are symbols of what you stand for. Mm -hmm. And if you get those wrong or me messed up, you, people cannot penetrate into what you are actually about. Mm -hmm. right? If you look at it, uh, branding as an iceberg, for example, yep. uh, your, your logos, your colors, your messaging, your tone of voice, those are at the top, at the mm -hmm. little part that people see. But if, if that's messed up, right, or if it's sunk or anything, people cannot even identify uh, who you are and they will miss out that whole chunk of uh, ident I mean, brand that you have, uh, which, is, which goes a lot deeper, uh, goes down to your purpose as well, goes mm -hmm. down to why you're doing this. And it is only when people understand that ethos eh, that you make a stronger connection. Um, look at, I mean... I'll just give an example of, of Apple. This is a brand that I strongly feel towards. Like everything I see around me is Apple. And I have... Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's a reason why I, I, I'm all for Apple. The first, if I look at my user journey or experience, and I was first introduced to Apple from my uh, lecturer in university. He, he keeps, he has this Mac head, you know, Apple head kind of guy, uh, vibe. Uh, so when people come to him with problems, okay, what are you using? Uh, a Dell PC, get a Mac. That's his line. <laughs> so I'm like, so frustrated. I hated Apple people back like then. And then I joined this uh, Silk Road company, right? My boss is a Apple head or, you know, a Mac head. Uh. So he, everything, he, he, his quote that I want to say is, I will buy anything that comes out of Mr. Jobs' table. <laughs> so he will buy anything that is Apple related. Uh, he gifted me uh, my first iPod, uh, I think my first uh, iPhone also, if I'm not wrong. And ever since then, uh, I, I, the, the, the introduction into the, the, the company brand, uh, it's not through the company or the advertising or anything. No. It is through the thinking and the, um, how, how these people behave and, and think about things that make me think that these people are visionaries and amazing and I respect them and they use Apple. Why? Because Apple represents what they believe, which is use, I mean, yeah, they got quality products and all that, but I'm using this stuff to change the world. I'm using this stuff to, to change the status quo. And that's something that resonates with me. And it's stuck, it's stuck on our, our audience until today. So again, all right. All right. it's the the meat of it that you need to communicate to people, which you will never get if you don't get the top part right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, got it. Um, what are the what are the branding mistakes that you observe from probably like established companies out there that mm -hmm. maybe you know others should be aware of? Established companies, eh? Yeah, mm. because I I I'm, uh you work with uh. Previously, in your previous job, right, you work with, um, you know, established companies and stuff like that. And maybe you get, you see some things that, oh, you learn and, and from there you, you know, you bring it to your, to your, yeah. So how do you? Sure. So uh, for established companies, one main issue is that uh, the communication between what the company is about from a, from a purpose, from a vision, mission point of view, communicating that into action by the staff, the people that run the company. That's uh, very often neglected or forgotten. So I, I've worked with companies where, where they, 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 they have these people called brand stewards. So their, their, their main job is to make sure the brand is on point. Uh, because back then I, I was doing the, the portal design, right? So during the introduction meeting, uh, Meet this guy is the brand steward. Okay, I'll give you all the assets. But then every design that you do, every thing that you write has to go through me for approval. But the thing is, uh, if you're talking about mistakes, right? Even those guys, they come and go. And sometimes they're just given a manual and they just stick to the manual 100% without 
fully internalizing what the company is all about. Mm-hmm. But of course, a good brand brand manual will cover those things, uh, the ethos and all that, what the uh, the founder's vision and all that. Uh, but it's really hard to get, especially when a company grows, it's really hard to get people to uh, believe and, and uh, act in accordance to what the, the purpose of the company is. Uh, that's always a challenge. Ultimately, I mean, employees are employees. Uh. Yeah, I've yeah. been an employee. So. Like I said, uh, I believe in the company for the first three years. And then after that, once the, mm. there's middle management, I'm like... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always <laughs> the, 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 the problem and the challenge and the issues. Yeah. Uh. Correct. And I think the trick is also communicating down to your middle management. Uh, yeah. To, to, because they are the ones who are going to empower the people who's going to do the main work. Correct, correct. It's very important. Because maybe for small businesses, like maybe for yourself, you have like, like you have 10, around 10, 10, uh, uh, right? 10, people, yeah. 10 people, right? So I think it's easier f- to communicate. But I think once you expand and you have more like a thousand companies or 10,000, I think it's going to be hard. That's why you need to hire people like what you said just now, the brand. What is brand it called? Brand stewards. Brand stewards, yeah, to yeah. keep everyone, you know, check and stuff like that. Right. Um, okay. Um, that's for the business owners. Uh, what? Uh, because I've seen a rise of personal branding now, mm. and yeah. So, what's your take on that? Does does it, does your branding also applies to personal branding as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I love the concept of personal branding. Uh, there are people who strongly believe in it. There are people who strongly disagree with it. Um, and I, I do, both both have merit. So my my point uh, my viewpoint is um, like if you look at this whole thing at ten years ago, eh, um, you have things like when it comes to personal brand, it's all about the person, and then it's kind of different from the corporate corporate world. Uh, corporate brand, you're looking looking at things like um, like I said, the, the brand guide, the the, the boilerplate templates, uh, making sure everything is on brand. Uh, a personal brand can, can be anything like Richard Branson is a personal brand, but Virgin is separated, right? And then as, as time goes by, uh, even the old days of personal brand and, and corporate branding differences, are uh, you have Steve Jobs and you have Apple, you have uh, Bill Gates, you have Microsoft. But nowadays, uh, I feel that it's a bit more merged, especially if the personal brand is the founder of the company. Um, you look at Elon Musk, for example, the company is his extension almost everything that he believes in his quirkiness his uh, visionary is all manifested within tesla within the boring company every brand that he gives birth to has elements of him so like who's in front now you can you can kind of debate on that um is is elon musk driving all these other businesses or are these businesses driving uh, who he is and that's, that's the interesting part about our world nowadays. Uh. Mm-hmm. And personally, I believe that you should put a face to it. You should, um, whether you are just running it as a personal brand or you want to associate your you know, individuality with your company, I think that's a good idea uh, because it uh, gives a lot more authenticity to your brand. So you encourage um, probably owners to, to also apart from focusing on their business to also focus on their own personal branding as well uh, yes if it makes sense mm-hmm. okay so let me explain if, if you are targeting okay sorry for, uh, simple example if you are uh, a bunch of like Asians or um, well, especially when it, when it comes to examples where you need to cross certain boundaries or st- certain stereotypes it may make sense to take a step back from that company brand. So say you, you are, you are doing like a, some high level work for big companies in the US, uh, you might, it might be a better idea to hire faces that they can associate with. Because ultimately, if you uh, look at branding, it's about connecting with your audience. And doing, putting your face is not always the solution to everything. Uh, especially if your audience doesn't look like you or doesn't has no connection to you, uh, so I, I I wouldn't say that this is a one shot, uh, uh, one answer for everything. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When associating it, but it seems to work for me for new entity because uh, we want to be genuine about this uh. Yeah, um, just a little bit more about personal branding. Like, 
yeah, I, I've seen you encourage uh, your employees to also, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to do their own personal branding and stuff like that. I see some of your, uh, some of them had their own uh, things going on for their own personal stuff, right? So you, enc- mm. you encourage that. But at the same, yeah. by the same time, like, um, how do, aren't you, f- f- like, let, let's say if they, if they work for you, and after that, at the same time, they, they also have, they also take time to build on a person branding through working with you. And let's say if they, their person branding overtakes, you know, get, gets more traction and stuff like that. Do you, you as an owner, do you feel, um, you know, oh, I'm gonna, do you feel afraid to like, you know, one day this person might uh, go off and focus on their personal own branding, right? Uh, or, or do you feel like, oh, it's okay, you know, because of me, you feel, you know, like you actually help her to, to grow and be who she is or who he is and stuff like that, yeah. yeah good question. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a question that I dabbled with often uh, early, early on with, with, when I was making this decision. But um, it's something I believe in because uh, I have to see them as teammates. I have to trust them because what's the alternative? If I look at the alternative, no, you don't, you don't do your personal brand. They're going to end up because I've gone through that road. I've gone through the road where I lose interest. I will just turn up for work and then I do my freelance, right? And I want everybody on the team to have a sense of ownership of the company. This is your vehicle. This is our ship, right? That we are all on the, on board. Um, yes, there's a captain, but everybody else have roles to play and everybody else are superstars in their roles. So without uh, there's not one second that I, I doubt that um they can get better jobs out there they can get better opportunities and i think i tell this to them often also that uh if you go out there you you probably get you know, a lot more or you can do a lot more amazing things but there's a reason why you're coming to work every day i want you to i want all of them to to understand why they're coming to work every day and uh if i can attribute to one thing eh, is is the people uh, they like to come to work because they trust each other and me encouraging them to all of us uh, to, to build our personal brands. Um, not only does it serve as a, as a safety net, if anything goes wrong, especially in these uncertain times, uh, but it's also something that they can be recognized for. Look, for example, like uh, Hana, you've met Hanafi, you've met yep. Sarah. I, I don't know if you met Sarah, but she's our, like our creative consultant. Yep. So, Sarah will can can own that 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 part of the business. Uh, I I manage projects. I do. I'm a mom. Uh, I juggle between work and life. So I actually uh, go through some kind of like brand strategy for their personal brands as well. Mm. And there's, there's a it's very encouraging to see after talking to them about the their angle and then hey look at look at these strings that that uh, tie them to new entity. It, it strengthens that, that bond as well, so I think. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, me, uh, of all your, your clients that you work with, right, do you have a, your favorite one that you yeah, like to share? <laughs> uh, favorite? No, la, I mean, uh, I respect and I value all our clients equally. Um, I think maybe interesting ones, perhaps, that I can share. Uh, so there's one that I worked on initially. They, okay, so initially, I, I, we had a lot of uh, clients in the blockchain space um, because one of our founders uh, is, a, is a VC in the, in the blockchain industry. One of our, our uh, we call that, maybe it's my, my boss's boss. Uh, he, he, he's on the board uh, of advisors. And he he's, he's a VC and he invests in companies, so he gives us a lot of opportunities. Uh. So one of the companies they do to to put a very glamorous take to it, right? He, they do blockchain in space. So uh, for example, the uh, one of the applications is uh, or value of of having this this system in space is it doesn't have any uh, jurisdiction, right? So if you you can you can upload your data, your, your cryptocurrency, perhaps your anything you, that you think about into satellites in space. And there's no legal systems on the planet that can dictate what happens to that assets. 
So I, I, I thought it was very interesting uh, and it was just a cool project to be on because when the founder gave me a brief, he said, okay, the logo needs to look good on a rocket, on a rocket ship. I was like, wow, I can't believe. And, and now it, they, they literally <laughs> launched it. Uh. Ah. They've literally launched a couple of rockets. Uh, they had deployed a few satellites in space with that brand and uh, we were supporting the whole, uh, the whole thing, uh, content and otherwise. Um, just well, one more is, would be Chamber of Digital Commerce. Uh, they started out with one lady. Uh, she was from the media. She was, I think, a reporter in uh, RTV, uh, finance side. Uh. So she was one person and she wanted to take on the giants. Right? Like, uh, basically, she needs to bring on board people from Deloitte, uh, Microsoft, huge companies. Uh. Uh, and this is one uh, one angle that you can look at uh, what branding actually is. Uh, it's a business hack. So for you to look like you are worth billion dollars, you need certain you need to have a certain kind of um, look and feel, uh, obviously. So <clears throat> and and we are very proud to to be able to assist in the, especially those initial days. Uh, where we need to build up all the communications, all the web and so on that allows them to get all these big names. So not only do they have their network, but because of the brand, they are able to get all these big names. They're able to, within I think one or two years, they, they had a big conference that we were also designing for. Uh, it, was, it was an accomplishment uh, to see like, all this come to life just from one lady, one person, uh, one man show started out as one man show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, during this tough moment, right? Like, mm. can you still do? Can your services still be operational right now? Like, can you still help businesses, others, uh, without uh, while while you guys are at home? Yeah. Uh, operations wise, we had no problem. We have no problems here because uh, we we did a bit of a business continuity planning. Um, oh, that's good. Just the, the viruses started to break out. Uh, the sad thing is once the, the the BCP phase ends, right, then the people the, the government started to recommend that if you can work from home, you work from home. So we, we didn't really go, go back to the office. Uh. So operations wise no problem. Uh, however there's a, uh, because of the situation and clients pulling out there's a bit of a strain uh, that we are trying to make up for. But uh, what we're, we're doing what we suggest to everybody also, which is to break down your services to the bare fundamentals and reconnect them with value that people need right now. Because branding, eh, people often get our services because they are in a, <coughs> in a mindset of growth. Right? They, they want to grow their business. They want to take from one level to the next level. Yep. But right now, people are scaling down. People are surviving. So we, we need to break down our services to the very core parts and see what people need right now, which is essentially taking their business online. Uh, there's, no really, there's no really real need for like designing logos or things like that. It's, all, it's more of that side of things. Uh. So um, realistically, that's what we are focusing on right now until we get through this. Uh, all right, got it, got it. Um, while, while you're talking, I have, uh, I'm just... I have this thought, like this curious thought, where like while you are building your company, right? So you guys, you guys are the brand experts and stuff like that. Um, how do you educate yourself in branding? Like you yourself mm-hmm. as a brand expert, how do you educate yourself in terms of branding? Okay. Um, of course, I have a lot of teachers, a lot of mentors. Um, first, the first one being my old boss. Uh, so he came on board. Uh, on, on our board of advisors or so. I consulted, I consult with him very often like, uh, on a once a month kind of basis. Uh, he's, he's not from a branding kind of background, but he's, uh, I, would, I would label him as an entrepreneur and somebody who's very well-versed in the business world. Uh. Um, in, from a branding point of view, I, I learned from, if I can just share my, my teachers. Uh, I learned from uh, Chris Doe and The Future. I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, they, when they started out, uh, these guys were basically running a motion design shop. 
in Los Angeles. Then they started to pivot because, again, the democratization of people can get motion design very easily now. So they, they pivoted to branding. And as they learn, and this is something that I think we should all take some lessons from, uh, as they learn the craft, right, they share it openly. They share, share everything openly. And then people like me consume their content and uh, a lot of the processes that we have today are thanks to them also. Like designing stylescapes, uh, designing, a, coming out of the design direction before you lock down on designing a website. Things that save us a lot of headache. So I learned a lot from them and then now they are, you know, their YouTube is like a few hundred thousand subscribers. They've really scaled up their brand now. So that's the other one. And then the rest of it will be books that, um, I mean, when I say books, I have access to the authors also because it's the world of social media. You have anything to say or ask, you, just, you can literally just tweet them. And they, they do respond, which is very surprising wow. to me. Now. Wow, mm. nice. So I've got people like Sasha Strauss, uh, Martin Neumeyer, um, who else? Uh, and then from a design side of things, I, I look up to Michael Beirut, uh, even Stefan Seidmeister. There's a lot. Uh, I mean, I can, I can go on. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of these people that I look up to and I follow. And uh, their thought leadership has been quite uh, helpful for me. The, the thing you shared just now, I think it's, it, it's uh, I believe in that also where you said that when they started out, they, they, they give content for free, right? Mm. And people like you uh, consume it and then it benefits, it's, it benefits you. And then with that, they gain more followers and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think that, that kind of concept, um, are, are you guys also doing that also in, in your, for, for your, yeah, company. Um, it's a challenge because we are still a service-based business. So when we get busy with clients, obviously we have to pay attention to that. Uh, our, yeah, our resources yeah. are limited, right? Right, right, uh, right. But we cannot deny, uh, we cannot stop putting out content and value uh, because that is the stuff that will uh, get us noticed. That was, it's, it's the top of the funnel brand awareness stuff. Uh. Yeah. It's important. Uh. Yeah. Uh, mm. Okay. All right. So, what are your goals for New Entity? Uh, five, ten years down the road. If let's, let's this, if uh, the outbreak is over and hopefully yeah, okay. for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So before you say five or ten years, I want to say one year first. Uh. Sure, sure. <laughs> so progress the, progressively. Yeah. It's okay. It's, it's to survive this period first. Um. But I'm I'm very confident and I'm, I have faith in my team that we can pull through. Uh, but uh, okay, once once we've we've pulled through, right, we're gonna re-strategize, realign ourselves because by then a lot of things would have changed, and we don't even know how this will end. Uh, there's there's theories where it will just uh, be a gradual shift to a new normal. There are theories where it might come to a point, and then there's there's vaccination, and then things go back to normal. So, we, and, and there's enough time that has passed that changes in the industry, changes to the business world would have been more permanent by then. Right? People would have realized a lot of opportunity, opportunity by now, by then, when, when this is over. So we cannot say today what we're going to be in five or ten years' time. But what we can, uh, what we can, we call that, uh, ready towards is the fact that we have each other. The fact that we all believe in work, we believe in each other and working together to help businesses with their branding. So that doesn't change. Uh. Um, <clears throat> how we go about it, the how will will be depending on what what the situation is, um, and the what as well. So we're picking up things like um, I don't know. Right now we are we are in super R and D mode as well. So whenever there's time, we encourage all of us to explore anything that you can think of. Mm-hmm. So people, we've been having people do uh, motion tracking animation, uh, we, we do uh, Instagram filters, things that we wouldn't have thought that we'd be doing, working on. But right now, just go out and explore anything that, that anybody can do because we don't know what's going to happen well, after right. this is over. Right, so much uncertainties and I think this is the best time for uh, I mean, I mean, a lot of people see it as um, 
as as a crisis and stuff like that but there's mm -hmm. also so much opportunities where we can um, uh, discover and and explore so i think mm -hmm. i think a lot of other business owners should should take your advice also and and to to sit down and re-strategize and you know uh, their direction and stuff like that and and like you said I, I like what you said you know to to explore more new things out there because we don't know really honestly right, really it's true we don't know what's going to happen uh, as in if we see Malaysia it's extending for the third time you know so we, we we might also do that and until the numbers are down and even if our numbers are down or back to zero if other countries are still having it it's still going to be a problem right uh, mm. around, around the world so i think yeah um okay other than other than uh, new entity um what have you invested your time uh, or money or other resources on for yourself as a personal uh, personal question so i i mean apart from entity the i i spend a portion of my time to volunteer at uh, this organization called uh, MTFA, so it's, it's basically Muslim Trust Fund Association. Um, right. One of the subsidiaries that you might know uh, is Darul Ehsan. So oh. the Darul Ehsan Foundation. Okay, okay. That is under them. Um, they do, you know, more than that. Uh, they do. They don't just do Darul Ehsan. They do, uh, you know, medical. So that we have a dialysis center as well. So I came in as the publicity chair. Mm. and just helping out with their branding and, and marketing as well. Mm, 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 mm. So that, that's on the volunteer side. Apart from that, uh, I'm part of this small group of independent filmmakers who are trying to come up with a... <laughs> and this is, is an interesting, interesting time for them to, to be in this uh, because, uh, yeah. you know, recently they have this... this uh, what what is it called? Uh? Van virus Vanguard, virus Vanguard superhero. Do, do you see the? the yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, I think, I think, yeah. Right. Well. Yeah. So uh, we are not there, obviously, but uh, we are coming out with a local superhero uh, series uh, that, that we are hoping to pitch to MediaCorp and all that. Mm. Uh, this is more of a side project for fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, one other thing is I I consult for for. Uh, with my ex boss actually um, on this consultancy firm uh, for, for branding type. Yeah. Mm, so all right. Okay. Can... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think towards the end, I'm going to ask you a few of personal questions. Um, when, the, when, when the word successful comes to mind, uh, who is the first person that you think about and why? Uh, Cannot cannot run away from this answer, lah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because um, he is the model that is given to all of us, lah. And I think it just befits your 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 brand name also, your yeah. Kelly, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because actually, I draw a lot of of inspiration and and uh, I I don't want to simplify it to that, lah. But I draw a lot of inspiration. For what I do in branding from uh, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he is the one who, if you look at like personal brand, eh, nothing is more than him. Uh, if you look at an idea, a movement, uh, a religion, even, it's all through that same person. And look at the the practices that is carried on uh, way after his death. And look at the religion now that nowadays lah, it's it's. It's um, of course there's divine, uh, but then it's um, what we call that. It's textbook or it's the perfect deployment of of how you want an idea to be spread. Um, and a lot of businesses want to spread ideas, right? A lot of brands want to spread ideas. Correct. And for me, there's no better example than that. And if you talk, uh, sorry, to, to, when you're asking about success, how can there be anything more successful than that? How about yeah. uh, in current times? Anyone? Wow. Okay. Uh, alive or dead? <laughs> alive, alive. Current times. <laughs> oh man. I mean, are, you, are you gonna say Steve Jobs? <laughs> I guess it's... No, no. I, I okay. don't. From from a business point of view, yes, uh, perhaps. Okay. Uh, but I don't know much about his personal life to, mm -hmm. to say. Anything. 
successful. I don't know, man. Like, it, there's a lot of uh, different aspects that I look up to different people for. Uh, but if you okay, uh, you, on a personal level, when you say when you say successful, I would look at uh, our old folks, uh, sure, our sure, old sure. folks no have, problem, uh, no problem. gone through life. They've gone through life, even though they have very simplistic. And I'm talking for my like my my, my in laws or my a few of them have have gone have moved on now. Uh, uh, passed away and all that. So they, they they control life and they have a lot of experience. But then at the end of the road, uh, when I look at what they are leaving behind, things are in peace, and then they are moving on, uh, you know, very naturally without any uh, like you know, there's no mess going on. I feel that that's ultimately what I want to to end up as la. Like, does it matter like you? Build billion dollar businesses. You help all these people. When ultimately, the when when you move on, it's just between you and God, right? right? So yep. I see that as success, uh, right? They have built something and they have maintained it, no matter how doesn't matter how small or how big it is. But that is the comma that that maintenance of good things in their life uh, that results in so many great things that can come out of that, like their, their children, their uh, what they invest in, so that that's my inspiration also lah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, what is the worst advice you ever receive or hear as a dispense <laughs> uh in your world? Wow. <laughs> uh, worst advice I got. Okay, okay. I can I can I can give you one example. To fire people when you. S- you see that they're not performing. Mm, mm. Uh, uh, that's a good one. I think, we can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, because um, again, I I get this from the examples that uh, the, the the mentors that I have. They don't fire people if they're not performing. They help people. They uh, they guide them because they they invest a lot of time and effort into these people. Even though when they they grow to a certain point and then they leave the company. And then they get somebody else in, and then they invest again. I'm like, why? Right. Why do you right. this? And uh, some of them, some of these guys that I, I look up to, until now they still do that, uh, and at the expense of their own growth. Though. But uh, if I had taken that advice literally, then I think I, I wouldn't have the team that I have now, lah. Because nobody is perfect, right. and right. I have to remember that when I started, also I don't know uh, most of the things I know now. So even if I were, you know, whatever the future is, if I were to eventually work with somebody else, I will still suck at the beginning, right? So it's all about uh, giving them the trust, giving them the faith, and having faith in them, and and helping them. Uh, whether they stay on, whether they become good employees or not, or good good uh, partners or not, that's not up to you, lah. What you can do, what you're responsible for, is at that moment what are you gonna do. So I got advice. Uh, to, to let people go lah, which is I, I'm glad I did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what is something that you really believe in, that uh, people think that is insane? Ah, uh, I believe in is cliche. Uh. <laughs> 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 it's not insane at all. It's, I I believe in living life with purpose. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and for all of us to have a clearly defined purpose. Uh, it, it's not. I, w- I wouldn't associate it with the why statement that that you know, Simon, you're familiar with Simon Sinek. Right? Of course, of course. Um, I wouldn't go down to like that kind of uh, thinking, but it's similar. But purpose is to me something that is not just uh, of service. It's also your your worldview, your your belief system, right? um, and. I mean, I, I'm very grateful to to be to be born Muslim and practicing, but that is something that not everybody might have at the top of their minds, ah. Mm-hmm. And and you you kind of those who, who might have a challenge in this will will, will mask it with busyness in life, with with uh, all all these uh, super superficial achievements, but um, I don't know. I feel like. If you don't have that, it's kind of hollow. Uh. 
it's not it's not radically ridiculous or what, but uh, I feel there's a lot more fulfillment if you can just go get out every morning, do the things that you believe in doing. It's step by step, but then knowing that all this is in line and aligned with what you believe in, it's uh, ultimately what I wanna. <laughs> nice, nice. I love that. <laughs> Okay, uh, I always ask this to all my guests. Uh, it relates to my brand. <laughs> uh, what makes a great leader? What makes a great leader? Yep. You are a leader uh, of your company. So what? I'm not even thinking myself. I'm thinking of the great leaders. And yeah, and yeah the of course, of course. I mean, I, yeah. So um, people like ourselves, we, you know, we see, yeah, get the values and... I would say uh, a great leader is one who cares for the people under his charge. A great leader is somebody who um, prioritizes the well-being of the people under his charge uh, over everything else, who guides and mentors and, and helps. Um, not, not help as in not do the work for them, but help them be better at what they do. Um, and it, it goes beyond work, uh, I guess. I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 fort I'm fortunate to have worked with uh, people that I really respect. Even, even in national service also, there's one officer that has very exemplary leadership uh, qualities. Uh, and often, great leaders, I don't know, like they, they, they do things at the expense of their own selves. Uh. Um, for example, just a story from, from my NS days. Yep, there was this sure. officer who, who took the hit for an NSF because the NSF screwed up something quite big. Uh, and as a result, he, um, he couldn't get a promotion for like the longest time. Uh, he stuck at lieutenant. lieutenant. <clears throat> but also as a result, this, this story got out and anybody who works under him will put in more than 100%. Uh, as compared to when people are deployed with other officers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I got a chance of, to, to work with him. And it, it's amazing uh, that everybody, even the, the, the guys who slack around, uh, like, you know, national service. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have an opportunity to slack, you slack. Uh. So those, those slackers also will, will come together and, and go all out for him. And they will cover his, uh, his mistakes also. And I, I see that and because he's just this simple guy who prioritizes his people. La. And he's not even doing it consciously, you know, he's just chill out. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people will go all out for him because people uh, respect him. I think that's great. So when that time when you are under him, he, uh, that already happened? Uh? That has already happened. Uh, all right, all right. So, uh, and also, uh, towards the end of my service, right, he finally got the promotion to captain after oh. like, a long delay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. was happy for him, you know. Mm. Otherwise, yeah. Why would NSLs be happy for... Like, correct, correct, NSLs? correct. But it's very different. You are in police, army, CD? Civil defense. Civil defense, okay. Okay, Ken. Uh, we come to the end of the podcast. Um, any last parting words that you want to say? Uh, firstly, thank you for having me. Um, parting words to your audience would be... Um, like a, I'm glad you brought this up uh, to, to live life with purpose. Uh. That's great. Okay, for those who uh, wants to engage your branding service, uh, they can go to, how they can reach you? How can they uh, reach you can you? go to our, our website, uh, newentity.com or any of our personal brands, you can search me up on LinkedIn or anything like that. Um, any, any channels that will be available. Thank you. Okay, Ken, uh, I think uh, it's been great. Uh, I, I pray that you, you know, uh, you and your team and your family are safe and well going through these uh, tough times. And uh, thank you. Thank you once again for this amazing podcast. And I hope it was thank beneficial you. to the listeners. And do check for the Hamza out and you entity out. Thank you. Thank you so much.